Do you love horror, science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff? Then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rackin' Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium, featuring the best of old-time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci-fi shows for Star Cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content, like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rackin' Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draw's B-Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low-budget drive-in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. Attention, Star Cadets! Stand by for action! Captain Paxar says prepare to travel time and soar through space while facing the worst villains of the past and the future. Stand by for Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour. Star Cadets, I, Captain Baxar, am speaking to you from the secret headquarters of the Interdimensional Peace Force. Today we launch a special six-part mission with our newest ally, Crash Corrigan, as he struggles against the Undersea Kingdom. Phase one of our mission is as follows. Mysterious earthquakes lead to an investigation of the ocean where a shocking discovery is made. Stand by for action as Crash Corrigan dives deep beneath the ocean floor. You look kind of uh, weak and puny, but I think you'll pull through. Thank you, sir. Great chap. I wish we had more like him at Annapolis. Yes, sir. Too bad this is his last year. You'll make a grand naval officer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're here once more from Polo Grounds in New York City. Witness this great game between the Army and Navy. Stands are packed, people are standing all over the place, and all eyes are on Crash Corrigan, captain of the Navy. Double wing back, 
Smith is back. With the ball pass from center, goes to Smith, it's reversed to Corrigan. Corrigan hits over his own right tackle. He hits the fullback, knocks him down. He's away, wait a minute, it's boxed in. Craig and Reynolds are coming in. He hits Craig, knocks him over, straight arms runners, and he's across for a touchdown. <laughs> Gentlemen, that was Crash Corrigan, captain of the Navy team, playing the finest game of his career. Wait a minute, son. What do you want? I gotta see Lieutenant Corrigan right away. You can't go in there. It's against orders. But I tell you, I gotta see him. It's important. Even if I let you in, you couldn't talk to the lieutenant now. He's busy. All right. <laughs> What were you doing up there? Dad sent me over to get you, but they wouldn't let me in. Has he had another earthquake warning? Yeah, he wants you to come right over. Well, wait until I get into my clothes. I'm going over to Professor Norton's laboratory. Very well, Crash. What you say is very interesting, Professor Norton, but I still can't believe that this little machine can predict earthquakes. Not only predicts, but prevents them. If I could get close enough to the source. Ah, oh, there you are, Lieutenant. The signals are coming in much stronger. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Miss Compton, staff writer of the Times. Oh, everybody knows Crash Corrigan. <laughs> that was the signal again. They've been sending it every five minutes. They? Just whom do you mean by they? Professor Norton maintains that these signals must be the work of some human agency, apparently coming from the bottom of the ocean. I hope you're not going to spring that fantastic yarn about the lost continent of Atlantis. Exactly. Only now I have some definite evidence. This is pure oricalcum, a metal made by fusing gold and copper. The secret of this process was lost with the Atlanteans. What does that prove? Well, according to every test, the idol couldn't be more than a couple of years old, something made recently. I found it during a recent trip I made in my rocket submarine in, uh, in this general location. And this is where the ancient continent of Atlantis was reported to have sunk thousands of years ago. 
contrary to popular belief, Atlantis did not sink overnight, but during a period of years. During this time, the people had ample opportunity to construct a roof of Auricalcum over the city and keep out the ocean waves. Thus Atlantis, though lost, still lived. <laughs> But your holiness, Unger Khan's men are at the gates. I beg of you to take safety in the citadel. Poseidon, god of Atlantis, has never forsaken his people in time of need. I promise you he will not do so now. There will be no peace in Atlantis until we have broken the power of this evil usurper, Unger Khan. It is hopeless, exalted one. Our men are outnumbered. The city is about to fall. Have faith. I am pleased to report that Sherrod's army has been driven within the walls of the sacred city. Good. Recall the troops. With those religious fanatics under control, I'll have no more interference with my plans to destroy the upper world. The fool. When you do succeed in sending them to the bottom of the sea, Atlantis will rise once more to its former place in the sun and you will be ruler of all things. Start the disintegrator. Sinclair is in ruins. Thousands dead. Hospitals burning. All communication cut off. Red Cross is appealing for doctors. Special trains are rushing supplies to the stricken area. Governor of the state declared martial law, rushing a militia to the scenes of the disaster. Stand by for further announcements. St. Clair? That's only 300 miles from here. Yes, and according to my calculations, another severe shock will occur any moment. Joe, put that counteracting machine aboard the submarine right away. Do you mean you're going down and try to stop this quake? What a story this will make for my paper. Let me get to a phone. Can I come along, Dad? Some other time, Billy. I have something more important for you, Billy. I want you to take a note to the naval base for me. Hurry up, Joe. We've got no time to lose. But, Professor, I, I don't think it's safe to take the submarine down that far. We've got to take that chance. Get those things aboard. Now, quick, give this note to the commanding officer at the naval base. He'll understand. Come on, Joe. I'll give you a hand. This is not an ordinary submarine, Bill. It's propelled by rocket motors, designed by Professor Norton himself. Yes, it's been tested at 2,500 feet, and he's going to try to reach the bottom this time. I'll tell you more about it when I get back. What? Am I going along? You bet I am. 
Hello. This is Professor Norton's boathouse. Brown and Deep hello, talking. Hello, hello, hello. Will you shut up? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean you, Professor Norton. I was talking to Sinbad. Huh? Oh, yeah. R right away. Professor Norton says to get the boat ready for a long trip. Two cents, I'd leave you behind on this trip, you old buzzard. Get on it. Hurry up. Up, up. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna fry me a parrot one of these days. Just the same, the submarine wasn't built to go to the bottom. It'll crack up like an egg when it gets below 2,500 feet. Oh, nonsense, Joe. Professor Norton knows what he's doing. Go back and help the professor. I'll cast off. Hold everything! Oh, we're just leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, nothing. I'm going, too. I was afraid you were going to leave without me. All clear, Bob. All right. Start your motors, Joe. shocks originate. Prepare to submerge. submarine will be crushed. You can't hold it yourself, Joe. There's no danger. Why, of course not. Well, you're all mad. If we go any deeper, the submarine will crush like the shell of an egg. Get back there and keep my nose down. We're going through with this. All right. 
You ask for it. I'll nose her down. I'll send her straight to the bottom. I'll send her to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Lock yourself in. Hold him out, Charlie. Open the door. <laughs> I hated to do this, but it was the only way I could stop him. He'll be all right in a little while. We're down 7,000 feet. And we're still diving. Do you think it's safe to continue? It's the earthquake detector. I'll stop the counteracting ray while you level the ship off. We're down far enough. There's something wrong with the disintegrator. Must be outside interference, Your Majesty. We'll soon find out. So that's what's interfering with my plans. It's a deep sea craft from the upper world, Your Majesty. Shall I destroy it? Wait. I have a better plan. Turn on the magnetic ray and bring them down into Atlantis. Professor Norton. What's happened? I don't know. 
We're on a level keel, but we're being dragged down by some mysterious force. Khan, a detachment of the Imperial Guard will proceed at once to the inland sea and capture the stranger from the upper world. Captain Hacker? Yes, yes. My horse, quickly. Number one patrol, huh? Number one patrol, prepare to move out. Number two! sea level, and apparently in another world. Ah, You'd better submerge the submarine while we investigate this place. You better hide the control box. Now, there's a good place. Yes, that'll do. Do you think we'd better wait for Briny and Sawley? Oh, it's unnecessary. They'll join us as soon as we catch Sinbad the parrot. <laughs> Unless my calculations are wrong, we've come across the lost continent of Atlantis. Oh, I can hardly believe it. It must be a mirage, some illusion. Listen. Why, that's no illusion. Those are hoofbeats. out of sight. We'll find out if they're friends or enemies. Hey! Capture them! After them, men! Thank you. 
He's escaped. Send out the juggernaut. Let's get back to the submarine. But the soldiers, what about them? I'll tell you later. We have no time to lose. Hurry, Diana. What's that? Some sort of a war tank. for that crevice. kites and are heading for the beach. Blast the invisible ray gun will soon stop them. Start the disintegrator. science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff, then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, featuring the best of old-time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci-fi shows for star cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draws B-Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low-budget drive-in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. Welcome back, Star Cadets. I, Captain Paxor, will now brief you on the second phase of our special six-part mission. Professor Norton's rocket submarine has reached the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis, where Crash Gorgon and crew are under attack from Mungapod's deadly invisible ray gun. Stand by for action as Crash Gorgon faces death in... The Undersea City!
Volkites and are heading for the peaks. The blast from the invisible ray gun will soon stop them. Mechanical men can't follow us through those flames. Look. Are you sure this is the lost continent of Atlantis? There's no doubt about it. What a story this will make for my paper. Girl reporter discovers civilization 10,000 feet below the ocean. Boy, I'd like to explore that city. So would I. Perhaps we'd better get back to the submarine before we run into any more of these strange people. Look closely, Mortis. Have you ever seen such people before? No, but I'll venture they're in league with Unger Khan. returning with strange prisoners. approaches the city with strange captives. Strange captives? Who are they? We believe them to be agents of Unger Khan. Oh. 
there will be no peace in Atlantis until we have broken the power of this evil usurper, Unger Khan. Before we could return and capture the strangers, the Volkites appeared and destroyed them with their atom guns. I wanted them alive. They are alive. Jared's men have captured them, Your Majesty, and are heading for the sacred city. Take a strong force and recapture the prisoners at any cost. At ease, Star Cadets! Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour will be back in a moment! Stand by for action, Star Cadets! We now return to Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour! submarine and wait there. I'm going to follow that juggernaut and see where they're taking them. Can I come along? You better not. It's too dangerous. Oh, shit. 
shut up and let us sleep. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry! What's the matter? Something yet? Oh, don't, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot! Howdy. Meet my friend, Sully. Pleased to meet you. This is Briny. Howdy. He wants us to go that way. This way? Yeah. <laughs> All right, General. All right. A little music could make them feel more sociable. Guest bound. He is no prisoner. Release him at once. Now I, Anga Khan, may more fittingly welcome you to my undersea kingdom of Atlantis. Your soldiers have already welcomed us. They've killed my assistant and made off with my son and Lieutenant Corrigan. The soldiers who attacked you were not my men. They were followers of Sharon. This Lieutenant Corrigan you mentioned and your son have undoubtedly been made prisoners of that tyrant. They must be rescued immediately. Order out the Imperial Guard. Thank you. It is I who should thank you. Never before has Atlantis been honored by a visitor from the upper world. However, I'm curious to know how you were able to penetrate the depth of the ocean. We use a super submarine propelled by rocket motors, which I perfected especially for the purpose. Quite interesting, Professor. Do you think these rocket motors could be built powerful enough to lift this tower? There's no limit to their size nor power. Given time and the necessary equipment, I can construct rocket motors that would raise this tower clear to the upper world. Good. You shall start at once. Are you actually proposing to move this huge metal tower? Why? Because it contains all the machinery which has enabled me to harness the atom, the most destructive force known to science. Once I reach the surface, I'll either become supreme ruler of the upper world, or destroy it! Professor Norton would never agree to help you in such a fiendish plan. He's insane if he thinks I will. We have ways of persuading people to do our bidding.
No harm will come to him. This machine will merely transform his mind so that he will obey me. Prepare the transformer. Start the transformation. The captain will debrief you in a moment when Captain Paxaw's Star Cadet Hour returns. You've all served to Bellar and Honor Star Cadets, but our special mission. Helping defend the Earth against the Undersea Kingdom continues. Crash Corgan and I, Captain Paxar of the Interdimensional Peace Force, salute you. You may now stand down until we meet again at the appointed time coordinates, when we will again undertake a daring mission through time, space, and alternate dimensions. Until then, Star Cadets, always remember. Eat the beast. 